You don't need to be a gymnast. You just need to be comfortable with your body. You need to be fluid and move smoothly. I can find an actor who can't fly and I can teach him how to fly. Hi, I'm Paul Rubin. I'm an aerial choreographer. As an aerial choreographer, I not only create and design and choreograph the flying sequence that the actor is going to do, I meet with a vendor to decide what equipment it's going to take to achieve that. And then I meet with the producers and the directors and the choreographers to bring their vision to life. I'm brought in for shows that either fly or simulate something that is flying based, simulate swimming or just a, a, a hanging. Anytime somebody's feet leave the ground or have to be off the ground for a period of time, they usually call me and say, look, this is what we're trying to do. How safe can we do it? I think flying is statistically safer than dancing on stage. There are more dancer accidents than there are flying accidents. So these are the fly wires. They're 3 30 seconds of an inch. They're just a little bit thicker than, than pencil lead, but they're a lot stronger. Each one of these will hold roughly, roughly a thousand pounds. This is the harness that the actors wear, and this would sit right on their hip. And this swivels, which it gives them the ability to do somersaults. Or they can lie out like Superman, or they can dive down and create all of these amazing body positions. And it's a real easy connection. This is the piece, slides right into the harness like so, and they're hooked up. I started doing magic when I was eight years old and I was doing professional shows by the time I was 11. I think being a magician and, and an illusionist helped in creating flying sequences in the sense that you're able to suspend disbelief. We all know that people really can't fly. To create that you work with the actor uh, in motions, in aerialography I call it. It's choreography in the air. And when they hit a certain point, you just need to angle your body. One of the hardest parts of, of making somebody fly is making it look natural. But when you focus on the actor and have him or her work with the movement and make it look like they're motivating it, then it's going to look smoother. I'm working on this production of Joseph. It's an original production. It's in a dream sequence. And what he does is he flies around the stars and the sun and the moon. If your foot hits it, it still looks cool because you're just melting right back into the rock. During today's rehearsal, I was finessing with the actor how to react to all of the actions. Every time he would fly in one direction and then he would have to turn around, we were finessing how to turn, how to make every motion that he does natural. And this is where you dip down and then you'll come up. Look at the star, fly over to here, and now when you start to turn, turn your shoulder and lean into it. There you go. As you back up, try and put your hands out like you're slowing yourself down. Because if you were going backwards... It's a little bit like a mime, because you're miming what it would feel like to push off the air. Um, so I worked with them today on, on cleaning that up and giving them an action and a reaction to all of the emotions so they don't look like they're just hanging there because nobody wants to see <laughs> a piece of meat with a nice Technicolor coat on. I sit in the back of the house or I sit house left or right and I look at all the sight lines to make sure that whoever's sitting where is seeing the same thing um, in a believable form. My first significant project I worked on Broadway was Peter Pan with Kathy Rigby. It was the quiz essential show for a flying designer because that's what you're known for. Everybody knows flying is in Peter Pan. And it was one of the most amazing, exhilarating feelings because here you are on Broadway creating the sequence for the person that's known for Peter Pan. And I think in my career that's one of the biggest highlights. Well, for Wicked, I, um, I worked directly with Wayne uh, the choreographer, as was more towards the musical numbers. So I gave him the foundation, he finessed it, and then I cleaned it up from his idea.
if it happens while there's no music, then I deal more with the director. Working on Curtains was, was an amazing experience for me. I got to work with John Kander, um, Scott Ellis, the director, but I also got a chance to work with David Hyde Pierce. The effect that we had him do was pretty strenuous. I'm sure he probably wouldn't want to do it again, but he was, he was very professional. Uh, and, and very willing to, to do what it took to make the effect work. It's not only just the actors or the director and choreographer I have to work with. I have to work with the lighting designer. So when the person flies, we have to make sure that you don't see the wires. I, I also deal uh, a lot with the set designers because we don't want the actors either flying into scenery pieces or the wires actually getting caught. And then I also have to work with the dressers, because the dressers have to help the actors put on the harnesses. I have to work with the dance captain. So when I leave a production, the dance captain is making sure that all the, the artistic integrity is, is left with the show. So I, I actually pretty much go through every department. I don't go to work, I go to play. I don't have a job. It's, it's a, every theater I go to is just a, a different playground that I get to play in. And I really can't see myself doing anything else.